Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Welcome to episode 38 of Talk Smart with Pew. I'm a car that is young Joe Pew over there looking fresh from a very, very, I tell you what, that card last night out in Sheffield, down in Sheffield looked, well, I looked at it, I, I watched it, so it was amazing. Um, the fights were just class. I think that's what a fight card should be like. There was 50-50 fights from the 7 o'clock all the way up to the main event. Um, what an atmosphere it was, Joe. You were there. Just break it all down. Yeah, great fight. Great uh, fight night. Throughout the build-up, everyone really said it was just littered with 50-50s. The five main cards, main card fights were great, great fights. Like you had Nico Levas, whose cuts probably clearly weren't fully healed from his last fight. And uh, they opened up early and it was an absolute bloodbath. But bites down on his gum shield uh, shows real grit to get the ninth round stoppage. So fair play, Nico. Take some time out now. Make sure they uh, cuts over both eyes are fully, fully healed. Then you go to Jimmy Joe Flint and Campbell Hatton. What a fight. Mm. What an absolute fight. Um, yeah, really, really entertaining. Campbell Hatton picks up his first loss, but what, what, what a learning experience for him. He really had to show that he had the cojones in that last round mm. because not 95% of fighters would have took a knee or would have completely dropped dropped his hands and probably got stopped. But he stayed in there in the last round and he managed to see the final bell. And he, he won certainly a few of the rounds. Um, I think one of the scorecards was a bit wide for me, mm. but Jimmy Joe was the right winner, deservedly so. And then we go to... Ishmael Davis versus Troy Williamson. Have I got this right or am I missing yeah, no, You're right, you're right. Keep going, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that fight was kind of in jeopardy for about 24 hours, genuinely speaking to the fighters, Lee Eaton, and it was genuinely off at about 9 o'clock that morning. Uh, so luckily, the weight situation had been sorted itself and both sides were happy and we got a great fight. We got... An excellent, excellent display from Ishmael Davis. He wanted to better Kevin Agiarco's performance mm -hmm. against Troy. Um, I think you could say he did, and now he wants to keep him fight. So that that's, that that sets him in great, great stead. I think he's mandatory for the British now, I believe. And then you've all uh, you've got Sam Gillian Louis Green fighting for that. Mm -hmm. So then, obviously, when that gets ordered, so that's going to take a bit of time. So he wants Kevin in the meantime. Then you go to Sandy Ryan. What an absolute performance again against a two weight world champion in Terry Harper. But Sandy just proved so too much for her last night. And yeah, statement, statement performance, I think, from Sandy. And I think we want to see a really big 12 months for her. And they're going to be some massive fights. And then that just leaves us with the main event. I, I, I was nervous, Andy. I was actually nervous for this fight because the Pada. He's a great fighter who's fought at world level on multiple occasions. And all due respect to Sam Maxwell, who's a great fighter, he has not fought at world level. Sam Maxwell is not a world level fighter. And that was Dalton Smith's best win before Zapata. So it was a big, big risk. And that risk paid off because no one has done that to him. He folded him like a deck chair, didn't he, with that body chair? It was mm. absolutely unbelievable. The statement that he's needed. And I'm sure we'll talk about the Adam Azim fight. But, yeah, what's your pick of that? What did you love watching on the uh, telly? Because there's a lot <clears throat> to uh, pick from there, Andrew. Definitely. And I'll, I'll just start with... I'll, I'll go from the bottom to the top as well there, Joe. When I was watching Nico Lavar's there, listen, for a young fighter to go through adversary like that, like I, I say this many times, I've said this before on this podcast, we need to know what if you can handle adversary, get a cut, go back to the corner... Surviving the cut, knockdowns, whatever it may be, can you? Are you that much of a fighter that you can go through that and still go on and win the fight? You win what round three? I think the cut happened. It was a bad cut. Um, Jamie Sheldon done amazing to try and stem the flow of that the cut man. Um, but the young man just kept on kept on listening to instructions from Grant, and it paid off in the ninth round there with a body shot. So that young kid that will stand that young lad in good stead going forward. So fair play to him. Then we go on to Campbell Hatton. Listen, 
Campbell's learning on the job. He had a good few couple of, he had about 20 amateur fights, 25 amateur fights, whatever it, whatever it was. And that hat and name, right, he gets a lot of stick for it. And even uh, Jimmy Joe Flint said that uh, in the press conference, you're not your dad, kid. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, again, that little, that pressure of having that hat and name, same with Conor Ben, that, that family name. I mean, he gets stick nearly every fight he has, Campbell Hatton. And I don't think it's justified. The kid is just living his dream. He just wants to go and have a fight. Um, he ne he's never claimed to be his dad. He's never done any of that. Um, I think for right now, I think we've found Campbell Hatton's level for now. This is his yep. level, right? Get the rematch or stay around that area, get maybe an English title. Stay at that level, right? That's your level right now. Fair play to you. Then start building again. Do you know what I mean? I would like to see that rematch. I think it warrants a rematch because it was such a good, good fight. And for Campbell... I think that would start, again, for a young fighter to go through that, you said he was knackered. He was knackered. He could easily have just took a knee or easily just let the fight flow and let, like, go back on the ropes, high guard or whatever, but he, he continued to fight. So fair play to the kid. I, I really, really, that'll probably, his stock has probably risen a wee bit more than if he did, yeah. if he won the title, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, but then you go on to the Ishmael Davis and Troy Williamson, a great fight. I love the way Ishmael fights the switch hitting. I mean, when he's got you in close, when you're in that short range, he dips his knees and he comes up with uppercuts and round with hooks. Very, very slick. And I really, really like that. And Troy Williamson, man, just, you know what you're getting. You're getting a fight. And that's that's what that's what we all pay to see. Uh, you mentioned it as well, Sandy Ryan. Absolute monster of a girl, man. Honestly, she is tough, tough as they come. Um, and I think she can go on and unify, become a two-weight world champion in her own right and uh, but absolutely fantastic performance from her. And then Dalton Smith, you said you were nervous. Like, I, I was there for Dalton's debut. I was at Dalton's debut, and I've been to about five or six of his fights. We've became good friends over the over the years. And I was nervous as well, to be honest, because like you said, that jump from Sam Maxwell to Jose Cepeda is not, it's probably two, three levels. He's not even gone to that European level or fringe world level. He went straight to world level. Because let's be honest, Jose Cepeda's been in there with, Regis Progre, Jose Ramirez. He's been in there with these guys. Do you know what I mean? So, and the fact that, he, I know styles make fights and maybe you can argue that Jose Cepeda is on the way out. I mean, he lost against Progre, <clears throat> excuse me, lost against uh, uh, Richardson uh, Hitchens, Isn't lost it? against him. Or, or, and you could probably argue that he was on his way out. All right. But to get him out there with a body shot in the fifth round, I mean, it did take Dalton, maybe Dalton the first two rounds, he was sizing him up, seeing what he was offering, do you know what I mean? Getting to, getting used to see what he was, his power and whatnot. And then the third and fourth, and then obviously the fifth round, you seen Campbell trying to catch him in it, that sort of like reverse one-two, stepping in. He was, he was he was class last night. And uh, yeah, I think I broke down the card. You broke down the card. Uh, I want to talk about the post-fight interview and... Adam Azim, uh, you, you spoke to Dalton last night and Eddie. Um, obviously, they want the fight, but how much do they want this fight, Joe? It's obvious they want it right now. Yeah, I love the fight. Um, and what, why wouldn't they want that fight? Why wouldn't you want to get that European title? I know Eddie's saying that he's dropping down in levels in fighting Adam. And Adam has obviously never fought anyone probably near the calibre of Zabeda. <laughs> but Dalton Smith had never fought anyone near Zapata until last night. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they, they are in close proximity and they, it's got to happen. It has actually got to happen because they have literally just played a blinder and they've just called his bluff. Like mm -hmm. Ed, Eddie Earn last night, daring him to take the fight. And like, let, let's be honest, Adam Azim will 100% want that fight. But if the team decides... It's basically, what they're saying is if the team decide it's not right for Adam Azim to fight Dalton Smith now, say it. Don't don't long, long it out. Don't keep them waiting when you don't need to be carry on waiting because Dalton Smith will have a great ranking in the WBC now. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be put in, a, in between five and two. So you can get yourself in a great, great position. Um, that That belt may well become vacant. We don't know what Devin Haney will do it will do with it because we do know Devin Haney will only go for the big fights now. Mm -hmm. So that 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 title might become vacant. We could end up seeing a potential final eliminator maybe between Dalton Smith and Sandor Martin. 
could see that. Great, great fights, but everything can go on hold. Everything can kind of can we can neglect the world titles for now if it means we're getting this Adam Azim fight. That that's the thing. Obviously, it's been ordered by the the British Boxing Board of Control. It's been ordered by the EBU as well. Um, yeah. So I think, like you said, I think that it's the team. They might not think that Adam Azim is ready for this. Like I don't doubt for one minute that Adam Azim doesn't want this. Like he, he, he like Adam Azim's not scared of Dalton Smith. Let me put it this way: he's not scared. He'll fight anyone. He's a fighter. It takes a brave man to step through them ropes and do what they do. So I don't, I don't think Adam Azim is scared. It's all, all about timing. We know that in boxing. We've been in the game long enough, me and you, in terms of this media side of things, and we get to see not just the product inside the ring, we get to see a little bit of the workings out outside of the ring, and we know that sometimes timing is key. Dalton Smith took a risk last, last night, and it paid off. Maybe they're not willing to give that risk to Adam Azim just yet, because, he again, if you look at his opposition that he's faced, I probably couldn't name them. I probably need to go on box rec right now and have a look who he's faced. Mm. I mean, it's, it's really maybe he needs that one fight, that two fight against somebody who is a name that's going to capture the public. Maybe a British level guy. I'm not saying that you need to you need to go in there with a world level operator right now, Adam Azim, to see where you're at. But I think maybe he does need two more fights, and that's what we're not. I'm not thinking this. His team are thinking that. And like Eddie said, maybe if that's the case, just free up the belt. Let's fight for it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I, I can I can understand I can understand both sides of the argument. Obviously, if Adam Azine's team don't want it, they think he's not ready for it just yet. Maybe two more two fights down the line, it will happen because they said it will happen. But it's just a case of when will it happen? Do you know what I mean? But I, I can see both sides if you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, Adam Azine's European champions. So if if you want to defend your belt, because most European champions either defend it or vacate and go up to the world honours. Mm. So Adam Azim's not going to do that. So why not defend the world title, uh, the European title in an unbelievable domestic title fight? It'd be absolutely, it'd be brilliant. It'd sell out the arena 100%. 100%. Joe, what have I said? What I say every single week, it seems, when you get two British guys fighting, whether it be the central area, Hat- Hatton and Flint there. Look at that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Boatsy Aziz. Look at that. When you just get Josh Taylor and Jack Carroll, look how much that's sold out. There's no belt on the line for that, but you've just got a garage match, two British guys going at it. When you've got two British guys that are at a very, very elite or world-level style and whatnot, and they could become world champions in their own right, but they're they're fighting for a European title, British title, Central Area title, Southern Area title, whatever it may be, it means the world to them. And you always, 99.9%, get a proper, proper fight, a 50-50 fight. Do you know what I mean? I think that's what that's why we tune in. Not just me and you and the media guys, fans. That's why me and you as fans tune in to these fights because we want to see 50-50 fights. We want to when you're you're looking at a fight and you can't pick them, that's the type of fights we like. And I think Adam Azim and Dalton Smith is that fight. Do you know what I mean? And it, listen, if you lose, you can come back. It's not the end of the world. We've seen yeah. that nowadays. A loss doesn't mean nothing in this day and age now. Do you know what I mean? As, if you put on a good account of yourself. Right, you don't go in there and get knocked out in the first round, or whatever. I doubt that will happen. But if you put in a good account, put in a great fight for the fans, you come back. Simple as that. Do you know what I mean? And uh, that right now, that what? But the thing is with Dalton Smith, though, he's like, he's now put his name in this division, this one forty pound division. That's a party up there. Look at all them names: Haney's, Garcia's, Progres, yep. Taylor's, Carroll's. Do you know what I mean? There's, that's a, that is a division and a half. That is a great division. And Dalton Smith just went. Whoop, I'm here, guys. You know yeah, I, mean? I think Pro Gray. I think Pro Gray tweeted about him last night. I think potential fight. Um, yeah. So for Dalton, it's either going to be the the really, really like hard world level guys because there is no easy fights at world level in that one forty pound division. It's thriving at the minute, mm-hmm. or the 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 big Adam Mazine fight, which we all want. But you mentioned uh fifty fifty fights there. Uh, try and get a nice little segue. There's going to be five Ooh. 50-50 fights Ooh. on the 1st of June. And now we know the weight divisions. As of about two hours ago, uh-huh. we got Warren's choices of heavyweight and middleweight. We've mm-hmm. got Eddie Hearn's choices of featherweight and light heavyweight. Then we've got His Excellency's choices of heavyweight. 
And the heavyweight fighters, I believe, is the two pointer. There's captains. Captain, so um yeah. there's two on the line. So I don't know how that's gonna work. There could be a draw in there. No, and then uh, which leads us to the only one. Which I'll be, like a, I'll, I'll, be, to... I'll, be a, I'll be an extra round, it'll be the thirteenth round. You know what I mean? Because if it's a twelve yes. round fight, right, you can get a draw, six rounds apiece. If you get a thirteenth round, then that's the decider. That's what we should do in boxing to save these draws. So I mean if yes. it's close, get into a thirteenth round and let that one score. Anyway, that's just that may be something his excellency will come up with in the in the near future because he's he's changing his game. I absolutely love this idea. Now let's 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 let's, let's have a wee sh- a wee game here, Joe. Let's let's see who we okay. think that Eddie Hearn and uh, Frank Warren will pick. His excellency picked heavyweight as well, but <clears throat> excuse me, his was you could draft anyone in. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be in your stable per se. You can draft people in um, if they're a free agent or, or whatnot, so to represent Matchroom or Queensbury. So that's very interesting. But let's let's start with uh, Frank, because Frank picked heavyweight straight off the bat. Now, his heavyweight stable is fantastic. I mean, Tyson Fury aside, obviously, he's got Dubois, Joyce, Moses Atuma. Do you know what I mean? Young Moses. Uh, so he's got a very, very good heavyweight stable. I'll probably miss somebody out there, Joe, that you could probably swing, him, swing my way. But yeah, I think he's going to go Daniel Dubois. Yes. Against. Mm. Who would Eddie pick? Heavy. He's got Joshua. He's Hergovic. Got... Hergovic. Oh, he's got Hergovic. Yeah, there you go. Hergovic. Yeah. He's worked. I don't think he got in, but they've worked together for a very long time. Um, Hergovic at the minute contractually, but I think that will be the one. I think Dubois, Dubois Hergovic, Hergovic is kind yeah. of in room. Yeah. Okay, and then. Frank also picked middleweight. I think it's going to be Hamza Shiraz against Amo Williams. Um, yes. You guys, yes. both of them, I think between them, are ranked top five in every single governing body in that middleweight division. And that middleweight division is wide open in terms of <clears throat> the champions and stuff like that. You've got Jana Beck. Um, I don't know if Lara's yeah. still WA champion, is he? Or is Landy Lara? I don't know if he's still... What, what he's, he regular? Uh, 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 I think so. You've got Yanabek, uh, who's WBO and IBF, I think he is. And then WC, is, is, yeah. is, is it still Charlo? Has he still got that belt? I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, so my Charlo's knowledge isn't great because they're recessed, they don't fight, and then... Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Well, it's quite right open that middleweight division. And for yeah. one of them to, to take each other's rank and just put them right at the top, do you know what I mean? I think... Yeah. Uh, Shiraz is ranked, obviously he's got that WBC silver, so he must be ranked between one and two in that WBC. Amo Williams has done, he's got, he's had an IBF sort of version of the belt as well, so I'd imagine he's IBF. I know, I know for a fact that they're both ranked in the top five of all governing bodies between the two of them, so I think that that's the middleweight fight. Do you agree or do you have anyone else in mind? No, I think spot on. I think that is the fight. Mm. I think that is the fight. And then Eddie go Pitt. down... Eddie picks featherweight first, featherweight. Of all, which I think is the most intriguing one to guess. I think that one is could throw a shock. I think, yeah. Who are you thinking? I think, I think Nick Ball. Yeah. Against Ray Ford. I don't. Okay. I think Nick Ball mm-hmm. versus Josh Warrington. Ooh. I think Ray Ford probably. I don't know whether he's going to have enough time to heal. Um, I I think Josh put a really like a, 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 a social media post up saying he had a really really good chat with Eddie Earn. So what a fight that would be, by the way. Maybe it's just me fantasy booking it, but what an absolute fight that would be. Mm. Nick Paul versus uh, Josh Warrington. Yeah, yeah. I'll change my mind. I'm going to go for that as well then. <laughs> that's a good pick I, honestly I just thought because they would probably want to get Nick Ball that world title shot again after that sort yeah. of robbery well it was a robbery let's be honest I thought I thought he won by a couple of rounds Nick but that's that's neither here nor there my opinion means nothing in this boxing game um, and then Eddie went light heavyweight and I think this was maybe a wee bit clearer I think I think Cam Smith against Yard no no neither of them neither you don't know. He's obviously been. What is it? What do you think? Well, no, I, I'm not in the know, but I'm just thinking that Callum Smith, maybe, 
Uh, but I think it will be Yard versus Boatsy. Apparently, it's quite close mm-hmm. on a box of cards. So I'm, I'm, I'm ruling Yard out. And then I think Craig Richards on the matchroom side. Mm-hmm. And that leaves a light heavyweight. I don't know. I really well, don't well, know. Willie Hutchison. I think he's Frank one. Willie, big Willie Hutchison. But I, I'm looking online. Um, Willie Hutchinson, potentially Zach Parker. Zach Parker's he's, he's kind of, I think, undecided whether he can make super middleweight, but he he will fight a light heavyweight. So I I think Craig Richards versus someone. And then His Excellency Turkey Ellis Shape went heavyweight. Now I think they're going to talk in Joe Joyce. I think Frank will go Joe Joyce, and I think Eddie will draft in Dillian White. Because he's worked with Dillian. Although he's never been signed with Eddie Dillian, I think he'll draft Dillian in for this fight. What do you think? You're coming out with some mad ones. You're coming out with some mad ones, Dad. It may be I'm just like just following the rumours because of being a little sheep, to be fair. But I think Eddie's kind of just trying to throw us all off and it is going to be Wilder versus Yang. Mm, yeah, but is that not already on the card? Is that not, is that not part of the 5v5? That's already on the card, is it not? As a... I think that is. I think that would be part of the five v five. I think because obviously Zhang signed with Queensbury. Yeah, he's got one. I think he's got one fight left on his deal, and then drafting the free agent, Deontay Wilder. Hmm. See, I, I still think that that I think obviously you've got <clears throat> you've got the top of the bill, which is obviously Bevel and Burt to BF, right? Yeah. And then you've got the five v five. That's only six fights. I don't think that's enough. So I think that Zhang and Wilder will be the co-main event. All right. That would be the co-main event. So you have No, 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 no. Definitely I, not. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we'll just get because most main cards, six fights, and then maybe like, like a couple of like, a, like just your usual kind of kickoff fights, maybe, or maybe try and stick a couple of uh Prospects against each other, which would uh, be a nice little uh, Brucey bonus, but I can't really see that happening. But yeah, I'm more excited for the Wembley one now. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking ahead. I'm looking ahead, mate. But uh, probably get the June the first out of the way, and uh, we'll see if that can happen. But if there is a Wembley one, and usually we, when we hear stuff like this, we're like, oh, take it with a pinch of salt. But anything he's excellent as he says seems to come to fruition. Most of the time, so I'm uh, very much looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, well, or we could, they could just be having us all on, and then they just want to chuck a Joe Parker versus AJ on there. Yeah, if we're well, going completely outside the box here, so, Parker AJ too on so the what, undercard. What are we going for then? The first heavyweight matchup, we're going Dubois against Hergovic. I think yeah, yeah. Then we're going. Uh, middleweights, we're thinking Hamza Shiraz and Amo Williams. Yep, definitely. Then, then the featherweights, we're thinking Nick Ball against Josh Warrington. Slash Ray Ford. If, Slash yeah. Ray Ford, yep. And the light heavyweights, we're thinking... We don't know. Well, well they were, you, you, you think Yard's taking up the equation because he's, he's, this Boazzi fight is close. Yeah. All right. What do you think about Callum Smith? I think he's. I think he needs a fight. I think he waited two years for the Burt Beer fight, but that was a two year gap or whatever it was before he fought Burt Beer of a year and a half to two years. He fought in January. This will be June. We're coming in April months. now. I think. I think if he's if if, you, if they announce Calum Smith, then listen, the Boatsy Yard we want to see, but. If Yard was given the opportunity to fight or something like that, I think he would go for that. Do you not think? Against Cal Smith? Money talks, but I think Yard's bigger fight. Mm. Well, actually, Yard's been spoken about for absolutely years. Okay, so we just go conservative. We just go off the coffee and just say Craig Richards against uh, Willie Hutchison. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. And then the other heavyweight fight, I said Joyce White, you said Zhang and Wilder. Wilder. Hmm. 
Interesting. I tell well, you, hopefully, the, there's not long to find out. Hopefully, there's not. Long hope, to find definitely. Out. In the press conference, uh, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh also said that they're going to be wearing masks. No. They want to wear masks to do the unveiling. So this is going to be this is going to be fun, man. This is less if you like uh, your game shows and your X Factors and your all that sort of stuff. Britain's Got Talent. This this is this is this this reminds me of that a little bit. The mask singer and stuff like that. So yeah, this this was this is going to be fun. I can't wait. I cannot wait. And uh, yeah, boxing's boxing's on the up, man. I think mm. right now uh, we're getting the fights we want to see every weekend. Every fight card that's on happening right now, it's it's the great fights that we're seeing, and it's it's amazing, John. I tell you what, we're two lucky lucky guys to be working in the sport that we love, anyway, aren't we? Certainly are, mate. Certainly are. Great fights coming up. Great fight this weekend, and uh, I'm sure next week we'll be uh, talking potentially, maybe. Might have to look at doing this on Monday, Andy, mm-hmm. next week because Sunday is Wardy Clark. Wardy Clark is a fight I cannot wait to watch and again. All be British, all British dust up, hit, hit, but British title, heavyweights, two undefeated British heavyweights. I mean, what more can you ask? Put that in a pot, stir it up. We've got a great yep. fight. Simple as that. We've got That's... to talk about that, so it might have Definitely. to be a little Monday job. Monday job uh, next then, week I'll give on the time. podcast. Definitely, we'll we'll do this Monday next week, Joe. Uh, but as always, thank you so much. Yep. Good to see your face again. You're you're, you're always you, fresh after a busy fight fight week. So well done, team, my man. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week, brother. Catch you next week. Have a good Easter. Thank you very see much. You later, mate. See you later. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.